A syringe full of brown gas. Cool it down. What do you think might happen to it? A decrease in volume? Sure. Maybe the brown colour intensifies in that smaller volume. Maybe you'd even believe me if I said that we would make a liquid. But could that liquid be blue? Let's find out. In the last video, we saw how you could make syringes of nitrogen monoxide in moments and then convert that to nitrogen dioxide. Now we have some of these syringes, of course, lying left around after that last demonstration with some nitrogen dioxide in them. But any experienced chemist would know that in this sealed container, we're not just going to have nitrogen dioxide, but an equilibrium will be formed between the red-brown nitrogen dioxide and colorless dinitrogen tetroxide. Predictions about the colour of the mixture in this equilibrium can seemingly be counterintuitive because changing one variable, like volume, has an impact on another variable, like density. I'll show you what I mean. If we reduce the volume, we expect the pressure to rise and the equilibrium to shift to the side of the reaction with fewer moles of gas, in this case, to the right. Because the N2O4 is colourless, we expect the reaction mixture to get paler. However, by compressing the gas, any NO2 that's in there, that will be squeezed into a smaller volume, making the gas appear darker. So who wins, paler or darker? A quick squeeze of the syringe shows that the color initially gets darker, and then we see the equilibrium catching up. So if you predicted darker, you'd be right, and if you predicted paler, you'd be right. And as these competing effects sort themselves out over the following seconds, you do end up with a mixture of a similar shade to the one that you began with. The same effect, of course, can be seen by pulling the plunger back quickly. This spreads the NO2 out and the colour gets paler, but then, as the equilibrium has time to respond, the colour darkens once more, and again you end up with a colour fairly similar to the one that you began with. The equilibrium is exothermic, so we'd predict the mixture in the syringes to respond to a change in temperature as well. I have an ice water bath and some water at 80 degrees Celsius. Any hotter and the thin tip of the syringe can begin to soften. We'd predict that adding the syringe to the hot water would cause the equilibrium to shift left to the endothermic side, and thus the colour would darken. But there's a problem again, because if the plunger moves to maintain a constant pressure, it could counteract the effect because the gas is spread in a larger volume. Let's see what actually happens. This time it takes a while for the gas to come into thermal equilibrium with its surroundings, so any competing effects are subtle. The equilibrium responds just as we would have predicted, with a significantly darker colour at high temperature and a significantly paler one at low temperature. The change in volume is actually fairly small because the absolute temperature, in Kelvin that is, is also small. When we squeezed the syringe initially, we could easily double the initial pressure, but a change from around 300 Kelvin to around 350 Kelvin is less impactful. What if we made the temperature a little lower? something very, very strange happens. Now, here is a syringe that I just grabbed from the freezer, so it's fair to say that the gas inside here is below about minus 10, except not only did the contents get paler, a blue liquid has formed in the base. To get the best effect for this variation, I mixed some NO from the previous experiment with my syringe of NO2, because this in here, this blue liquid, is the dimer not of NO2 with itself, N2O4, but NO2 with NO, dinitrogen trioxide. The logic is the same. Lower temperatures favor the exothermic direction. The molecules bond together, but this time the product condenses and the product is not orange, but blue. Another reminder to students how much a change in the subscripts of a formula can impact its properties. For post-16 courses where trickier Lewis structures are required, like the IB Diploma Program, this of course provides an opportunity to jump into some of those structures, as you would have likely covered covalent structures by the time that you got to advanced equilibrium. Turns out there's a lot of chemistry that you can show in a syringe, so give it a try. <laughs> 